And I guess the biggest decision I've had lately was, um, uh, I think it was just summer jobs, uh, what to do and what to apply for and whatnot. Um, and it turned out pretty well. <laughs> so that's a, uh, it's getting better. Do I want the wrap or do I want the sub? And you sit there for five minutes and you still haven't decided. But generally, I'm pretty impulsive, so I just kind of go with whatever I think first. At the crux of it is who is it going to impact and how is it going to impact them? And then what steps do you have to take to make this decision? Normally, you like know what the right decision is before you're going to make it. You just have to make it, if that makes sense. You know, like choose to do your work or choose not to. You like, you know the right decisions to do it, but it's more fun not to. So the decisions made quickly, it's just convincing yourself to do it. I'd studied decision making um, as a profession. The way I study it is looking at how consequences affect our decisions. Um, so I look at it from the standpoint that decisions are what are called operant behavior or instrumental behavior and that we make decisions and we continue to make decisions based upon the outcomes of the, or the consequences of those decisions. So we choose things that uh, provide reinforcing outcomes or provide reinforcement to us and we avoid doing things that provide punishment to us. Um, but uh, it turns out that many of the consequences that we get differ in their sizes, how big they are, how important they are to us, and so forth. But sometimes those consequences occur much later than when we engage in a decision with respect to them. So, for example, if we have some money, we might spend it now on something that we enjoy right now, but at the expense of getting something better later or saving money and have, having more money later. College students are right at that area where they're almost um, you know, having their brains really poor. Uh, so, you know, many adolescents and many college students are making very good decisions and, and others are having more challenges and sometimes that can be related to other things that are, uh, you know, anxiety, depression, um, some mental health concerns might also sort of interrupt and, and disrupt decision making. Um, it, it might provide some barriers for students that are really trying to move in the direction of their life that they want to. Yeah, I, I try not to categorize decisions as bad decisions necessarily. I think that um, you know the way that I look at it is uh, for most college students, how are the choices that you're making impacting your life? What are the consequences of those choices? It's is that yes, once or twice people are going to make decisions and they're going to have these negative consequences for them. Um, but my role as a, a psychologist in practicing clinically is to help them really to um, understand the choices that they're making um, and to look and think through those consequences so they're moving in a direction in their life that they're wanting to move in. Or sometimes we do things that are enjoyable now that put us at risk in the long run. Um, so we call those kinds of decisions that sort of involve trade-offs about getting something right now versus getting something later or getting something with a different probability. We call those choices impulsive choices. Um, and if you, if you choose to sort of immediate gratification rather than being able to wait for something maybe that you would consider more important but you don't get it right away, um, we call that an impulsive choice. And it's been shown that uh, younger people tend to make more impulsive choices than older people. On, on average, younger people tend to be more impulsive. And we study this uh, by studying uh, uh, individuals' ability to wait and get a bigger reward rather than get an immediate reward. And it turns out that older people tend to wait, uh, be able to wait a little bit longer than younger people. Decision making is a very, very complicated and complex uh, mechanism when it comes to our brain. Um, <clears throat> but I think one of the major things that's come out the last number of years about decision making with adolescents is that 
the adolescent brain uh, is about 80% developed and then around 25 the brain becomes fully developed. There's a region of our brain called the amygdala which is responsible for um, emotional reactions, intuitive uh, reactions such as anger, anxiety, aggression, uh, fear. And then we have the frontal cortex which is the part of our brain that is responsible for thinking through uh, different decisions and just how we're going to respond to particular situations. So. Um, when we're talking about an adolescent brain, that frontal cortex is the last piece to develop. So um, a lot of times adolescents, like all of us, will experience these emotional reactions, um, but they do not have as much capacity as a fully developed adult brain to make that um, thoughtful decision process happen. That's one critical difference, I think, between older and younger people, is that older people, this process is called delay discounting. And delay discounting is how the wait time until you get a reward devalues it. So, just for an example, if I asked you what would you want, $100 now or $1,000 in a year, you might pick $100 now, take it now. And, and in some cases, that might be the right thing to do because you might need $100 now. Um, um, I might go, what would you want, $100 now or $10,000 in a year? Um, uh, a younger person would be more inclined to take the $100 now than an older person would. So older people seem to be able to wait longer for the benefits. And per perhaps it's the result of a lifelong experience making certain kinds of choices. One thing to start with is really contextualizing the fact that most of us day to day and our brains are really wired for this is we uh, make decisions automatically. We do things so routinely, uh, so automatically and, and most of the time that's perfectly okay um, and it helps us just sort of streamline how much actual mental energy we have to put into making choices. Um, but I think when we compare uh, an adult brain uh, like mine to an adolescent brain, one of the things that I think um, that we do is we understand how we respond to people, to our environment, uh, in terms of our emotions. So if I think about if I'm interacting with you, how, how might I be provoked? Is it anxiety? Um, is it anger? Uh, is it happiness? Like, how am I being affected? So I like to think about how I'm feeling in that moment, and that helps me to understand uh, decisions that I can make. And where the frontal part of my brain comes in is I recognize that feeling, I can name it. And then at that point in time, I can think through, okay, here's how I can behave. And if I do behave this way, here's some of the results that might happen. Here's the consequences for you. Here's the consequences for me. Um, so I'd like to attend to, to all of those feelings that I'm having in a moment and, and make a decision, um, you know, being thoughtful about how I'm going to respond.